of today's Monday Bible study meeting in the name of Jesus. Magnify your name and your glory in our lives. Open our hearts, O Lord, to your word. And help us, O Lord, to live by those, those, the word we are going to receive tonight in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we prayed. We open our Bible to Psalm 68, verse 18, as we pray together. Verse 19. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. We want to open our mouth in appreciation and gratitude to the living God and bless his holy name. Every day the Lord is loading us with his blessings. The blessing of protection, the blessing of salvation, the blessing of, I mean, of grace, the blessing of preservation in the, in the truth. Worship the Lord and glorify him. Magnify him. It's by his mercy we are not consumed. Exalt his holy name. Thank him for the great and marvelous things he's doing in your life, in your family, and in our church. In Jesus' name we pray. We are here this evening to study the word of God. And in Psalm 119, in verse 33, he said, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. We want to pray the Lord tonight, through its servant, our Father and the Lord has anointed and appointed for this purpose. He will use him mightily to teach us, and God will give us a teachable heart as well, to receive the word of God, and we keep that word unto the end in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray and tell God, as the living God for his help, we need it, you to teach us your word tonight in the name of Jesus. And tell the living God, we want to give us understanding as well. We want to understand the word. The scripture has been opened unto us. Give us understanding. And by your grace, we are going to keep the word. We are going to observe it with our whole heart. Let's pray and tell the living God that our whole heart, we keep the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by his grace, he will help us to live by that, the word of God till we see Christ in glory in the name of Jesus Christ. He will keep us to live by the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. We want to remember our members who are here to be here, that Lord will bring them here on time in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, we are going to pray for our Father and the Lord, who the Lord has appointed and anointed for this purpose. That the Lord Himself, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give Him unprecedented unction, entrance, and wisdom to teach us the Word of God, the Scriptures, in the name of Jesus Christ. And the teaching we are going to receive today will be positively impacted in our, on our lives. That by the power of the living God, everyone that comes here tonight and also across the globe that they are listening to this teaching from the mouth of his servant our father in the lord the jesus they will be transformed every one of us together in the name of jesus christ let's pray let's tell the living god the lord will do it in the name of jesus christ because the entrance of the word of god brings light and life our light will be shown unto our hearts in the name of jesus christ and we live by the word of God in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for, being, for your presence in our midst. We know, Lord, in heaven, mightily, you are going to use your servant, O oh, Lord, in heaven, to teach us the word of God. And by your grace, we live by that word. By your grace, we keep that word in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, let's have a seat. Let us pray. 
Our Father, we thank you very much for another privilege in your presence. We're asking and praying that today will be with a difference. You will inspire us. You will bless us in your word today. As we start by worshiping you, accept all our worship, and prepare us for the best today. Thank you because we know you have answered us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let the glory of the Lord come down. Let the glory of the Lord come down. Let the glory of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the glory of the Lord come down, come down. Into our midst, let the let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord from heaven come down let the power of the lord come down come down It is raining all around us. We can feel it, the lots of rain. We pray you, Jesus, give us more rain. Until we are wet, until we are soaked with the lots of rain. It is raining. All around me, I can feel it, the lottery. It is raining, it is raining, all around me. I can feel it, the lot of rain. Ride on, Jesus. Give us more rain. Until we are wet, until we are soaked with the lot of rain. It is raining. I have the voice of the Lord, and he said, here I am, send me. Isaiah had the voice of the Lord, and he said, here I am, send me, here I am. Anywhere. Isaiah had the voice of the Lord, and he said, Here I am, sang. Isaiah had the touch of the Lord, and he said, Here I am, sang me. 
Isaiah had the touch of the Lord, and he said, Here I am, send me. Here I am. Here I am. Send me. Isaiah had the of the Lord, and he said, here I am. Touch me one more time, O oh Lord. Touch me one more time, O oh Lord. I need the touch of the Master. I need the touch of the Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. I need a touch of the master. Touch me one more time, O oh Lord. Touch me one more time, O oh Lord. I need a touch of the Master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time, O oh Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time. I need a touch of the master. I need your touch in my tongue. Touch me one more time. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let's come what may, the Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day, day after day. Day after day, I live for Jesus. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let's come what may the Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day, day after day. Today, Jesus, let's come what may. I will obey. I live for Jesus. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let's come what may, the Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day, day after day. Let come what may, Spirit, I will obey. When he calls me, I will answer. 
When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere walking for my Lord, for my Lord. Walking, I'll be somewhere. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere walking for my Lord, for my Lord. Somewhere walking, I'll be somewhere walking, I'll be somewhere walking for my Lord. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. The kingdoms of my heart, Jesus be, Jesus be the Lord of all, Jesus be the Lord of all, Jesus be the Lord of all, the kingdoms of my heart dwelling together how happy we shall be through all eternity for we shall dwell together my lord and her Together, my Lord and I. Amen. We want to welcome all of us to this glorious and precious Bible study this evening. And uh, I want to remind also every member of the church gathered here to please. Be reminded not to clap when we are calling our visitors and also after the choir ministrations. The Lord bless you as you obey in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to use this occasion now to specially welcome all GCK converts, invitees, and visitors coming to our headquarters church for the very first time. Wherever you are seated, kindly signify by raising up your hand. The Lord loves you, and the church also loves you. Let's see you. Wherever you are, please kindly, I mean, rise up on your feet so that I can give you the welcome of our pastor, the general superintendent of this church, and the members of the church. Stand up for recognition, please. God bless you. The GS, our Father and the Lord, we want you to continue coming. It's delighted you are here this evening. And I must tell you, God has been using tremendously to be of blessing to thousands of souls all over the world. Your coming here is for your blessing. I want you to plead with you that this will not be the last time you come. You continue coming steadfastly in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Our ushers are standing by you. They will give you a slip. Please collect it from them. Fill it appropriately in capital letters, please. And thereafter, you return it to the ushers. And after that, you can kindly have your seats after you have dropped the slip. Let's listen to the following weekly, I mean, our announcement, our weekly meetings. Every Monday, we have our systematic and spiritual study of the Bible. This is personally taken by our general superintendent. And this starts at 5.45 p.m. in all our districts and church locations. Thursday and evangelical training service. Every Thursday, we have our revival and evangelical training service. And in fact, every third Thursday of the month, we have the Power Night. And the next edition comes up on Thursday, 21st of November, 24th at 5.45 p.m. Let us invite to our various districts and church locations our neighbors, friends, colleagues, and relations, including the sick, the lame, the blind, the oppressed, and those with diverse kinds of diseases and ailments. And I want to assure you, there shall be mighty manifestation of God's power. There will be deliverance. There will be joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Every Sunday, we have an enriching Sunday worship service, starting at 7.45 a.m. in the various districts where we come from. Brethren from Service Group 1, will be coming here on Sunday, November 17, 2024, for their worship service. So let me be punctual. Tuesday, it does development. Tomorrow, November 12, and Tuesday, November 19, 2024, all Tuesday leaders will be meeting here for the Tuesday Leaders Sheep Development Meeting at 5.15 p.m. There shall be no ministerial renewal and impact refresh this month. Brethren in service group two will be coming here on Saturday, November 16, for their workers' meeting, while those in service group one will, be, will meet at their various groups. Global Crusade with Kumoyi, GCK. This month's edition of our Global Crusade with Kumoyi theme, The Great Escape, True Faith in Christ, comes up on Thursday, 28th of November to Tuesday, 3rd of December, 2024. The ministers, Church Workers and Professionals Conference with the theme on limited power for life and ministry will be on 29th November, 2nd and 3rd of December 2024. All workers in training and professionals are to attend the conference in our various group headquarters at 8 a.m. on each day of the conference. The Impact Academy with the theme, Key to Success Without Limits for Teenagers, Campus Students, call members and young adults will come up on Saturday, 38th November 2024. The program starts at 8 a.m. We should inter intensify our prayer, prayers and publicity for these programs. And God will bless us as we attend in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to rise up on our feet to sing our cognitive song that is taken from GHS M45. 45. Jesus, my strength, my hope, on thee I cast my care, with humble confidence look up, and know thou hearest my prayer. Give me on thee to wait, till I can all things do, on thee almighty to create, almighty to renew. I want a godly fear, a keep the sunny eye, that looks to thee when sin is near, and sees the temper, tempter fly, his spirit still prepared and armed with jealous care, forever standing on his guard and watching unto prayer. I want a true regard, a single steady aim, unmoved by threatening or reward to thee and thy great name, a jealous concern for thine immortal praise, a pure desire that all may learn and glorify thy grace and rest upon the, thy word. The promise is for me, my succor and salvation, Lord shall surely come from thee, but let me still abide, nor from my hope remove, till thou my patient spirit guide into thy perfect love. Amen.
Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading, but before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially. You will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fifth book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. The fifth book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. Chapter 24. Chapter 24. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and giveth it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, but if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled, for that is abomination before the Lord. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year, and shall cheer up his wife, which he hath taken. No man shall take the nether or the upper millstone to pledge, for he taketh a man's life to pledge. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die, 
and thou shalt put evil away from among you. Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently, and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you, as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam, by the way, after that ye were come forth out of Egypt. When thou dost lend thy brother anything, thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his pledge. Thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou dost lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee. And if the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. In any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge again when the sun goeth down, that he may sleep in his own raiment, and bless thee. And it shall be righteousness unto thee before the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren, or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. At his day thou shalt give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. But thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. When thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. Chapter 25. Chapter 25. If there be a controversy between men, and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous, and condemn the wicked. And it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down, and to be beaten before his face according to his fault, by a certain number. Forty stripes he may give him, and not exceed, lest, if he should exceed and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. If brethren dwell together, and one of them die, and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her, and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be, that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, My husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel, he will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him, and if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders, and loose his shoe from off his foot, and spit in his face, and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that hath his shoe loosed. When men strive together one with another, and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, and putteth forth her hand, and taketh him by the secrets. Then thou shalt cut off her hand, thine eye shall not pity her. Thou shalt not have in thy bag divers weights, a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thy house divers measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. 
But all that do such things, and all that do unrighteously, are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou wast faint and weary, and he feared not God. Therefore it shall be, when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace that you will do as you are blunt in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to give our tithes and offering. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Whatever we have come to Bless the Lord with. Let us raise it up while we pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, for always providing for us, out of which we have brought this, O Lord, to appreciate you. We pray you accept it from us. Bless it, Lord, and use this, O Lord, for the expansion of your program, O Lord, in our dispensation in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless every giver. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have our leaders around us. Let's quickly drop our offerings.
now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world. Yeah. Oh, it's like 
the shores of the Atlantic to the hills of Monrovia, a nation cries out for hope. Forgiveness goes along with freedom. It sets you free so that you are not in bondage anymore. Liberia, land of liberty, where freedom's flame burns bright. But freedom's true power lies not in our history, but in our faith. A kind of forgiveness that also brings freedom from the power of sin. Join Pastor W.F. Kumui at the GCK Crusade and experience the great escape through faith in Christ. When the grace of God comes to you, it makes you to escape the judgment coming on the earth. Featuring guest music minister, Jonathan White. This global crusade with Dr. Kumaway, and because of God's goodness, we're gonna see breakthrough. Because of his faithfulness, we'll see breakthrough. Expect that breakthrough as Dr. Kumaway speaks. Reach out and claim that breakthrough. Happening from November 28th to December 3rd, 2024 at SKD Sports Complex, Moravia, Liberia. Time, 1600 GMT daily and 700 GMT on Sunday. Join the youth for an electrifying impact session on November 30th at 7 a.m. GMT and get the key to success without limits. Join esteemed ministers and professionals on November 29th and December 2nd and 3rd by 7 a.m. GMT for a transformative session and get unlimited power for life and ministry. Come experience revitalization and equipping for effective ministry, personal growth, and spiritual renewal. GCK in Liberia. Escape to Jesus. Escape to freedom. Share the hope. Invite someone. GCK, gospel to every creature. The Lord has paid the price. He's been sacrificed for us on the cross of Calvary. He has given us redemption. He was foreordained to pay the price of our redemption before the foundation of the world. That shows us that the redemption we're talking about is not a limited redemption. It's full is complete is all all inclusive for your spirit for your soul for your body from the time you are born again until the time you see him face to face it's an all inclusive redemption everyone has been paid for there is no one that cannot be saved the vilest of sinners can be saved. The most wicked, the most terrible can be saved. And so, if the devil wants you to doubt your salvation, and he says, do you think you of all people can be saved? The redemption you have is not a tickle of redemption. It's not a small, little redemption. You know, there are people that think, I am saved, my soul is saved, my soul is redeemed, but my body, the devil is still in control. But now, he has paid the full price. And because he has paid the full price, from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, you are redeemed. The Heavenly Father has given a great prize for you. You are now a man, a woman of purpose, a man, a woman of possession, a man, a woman of dynamic progress. Calvary will have no meaning for those who have not repented. Calvary will have no impact on those who have not repented. You want your sins to be blotted out and you want the power of sin to be broken and you want the purpose of redemption to, be, to take place in your life. The Lord is watching. Anyone that repents, anyone that is converted, immediately all their sins are blotted out and then times of refreshing will start in their lives. Christ is happy and proud of you. And he's not ashamed of you. You were purchased for him. He has redeemed us. 
he has purchased us he bought us out of the hand of the old owner and he purchased us for himself and we're no more part for him and part for the old owner you purchased a car and now you use that car all for yourself the one that had the car before you purchased it cannot come and say i have need of that car now i'll use it for some days and then i'll get back to you will be interchanging the use that's how some people position their lives they serve the lord on sunday and then the rest of the week they're serving the old owner but now when you are purchased he has you entirely and fully and completely for himself the blood of jesus is the greatest cleanser that will make you clean and take every spot every stain every defilement all away at a go what the lord has ordained and the path he has chosen we're going to keep walking on that highway of holiness nothing will push you down nothing will double cross your way and nothing will stop you on the way in jesus name i saw man with joy with assurance and with confidence knowing that the lord will perfect everything that concerns your redemption everything that concerns you that the lord will perform and perfect everything raise your voice to the lord and say lord i thank you lord i thank you lord i thank you the promise is mine the promise is mine open your mouth and tell the lord we have just heard the word of god from our father and the lord let us take all that we have heard to the lord in prayer Let's ask the Lord to give assurance of salvation to all those who have been born again for some time now and yet they are doubting their salvation. The devil is telling some of them, saying, are you sure with all the atrocities you have committed that your sins can just be forgiven so easily and so quick? That the Holy Spirit will open their eyes of understanding and they should know and realize that this salvation they have received is free, full, complete salvation. That God will help them to overcome the spirit of doubt that is going on right now in their heart. Pray, pray, ask the Lord to help them to bring them out of that challenge, that they will be assured that they are born again and their names are written in the book of life. Some of them repented during the GCK. Some time ago, some repented in the retreat. Some repented during some other outreaches of the church. They need to be assured in their spirits that the Lord has forgiven them, and that their salvation is full. Let us also pray for those who've been in the church for a long time, some for some years now, they are not yet saved because they have not decided. The redemption that Jesus brought for us will not make impact in the life of anyone who hears this gospel and refuses to surrender his or her life to Jesus. They will enjoy the benefit of redemption only when they repent from their sin and receive Christ in their heart. That God will have such members who has been coming, who have been coming to the church for some time now without salvation, to repent and get born again. We also want to pray for those who are born again, 
who are yet to experience sanctification. The redemption covers our salvation, our sanctification, and the healing of our bodies. That God will grant every member of the church who are yet to be sanctified, sanctification of the spirit. That God will give them the hunger to pray until they are made holy. Let's ask God to help his people to know that this redemption is complete and full. Are you saved? You need to get sanctified. Are you sanctified yet you are sick? The salvation Jesus brought for us, the redemption, it covers both our soul, our spirit, and our bodies. Now God will help every member of the church to enjoy the full salvation that the Lord Jesus has brought to us. There should be no one sick, feeble person among us, soul, spirit, and body. Let's thank the Lord for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we just want to thank you for how you've spoken to us. We want to thank you for assurance of salvation. Lord, I pray that from this day, every soul that is born again in this church, that you give them assurance of salvation. Lord, those who are sick, you bring healing to their body. Those who are yet looking for sanctification, I ask, Lord, that you help every one of them from now to begin to enjoy the full benefit of the redemption, which covers our soul, spirit, and body. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And everybody said, I welcome everyone tonight to our Bible study in Jesus' name. Our congregation at the headquarters here and all over where we're connected with the world. And the Lord bless everyone in the study of his word in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for the provision of your word, the preparation of your word and also the preservation of the word. All these millions, all these thousands of years, you preserved it for us for good. That we may be saved, that we may be prepared to meet you in heaven at last. We are praying, Lord, that the purpose of giving us the word will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to James chapter 3. We're reading from verse 5, and we'll be going eventually through to verse 10. Look at verse 5. It says, even so the tongue as a little member, a little member. Tonight, we're looking at the word little, a little member, a little tongue, a little finger, a little hand, a little toe, a little foot. Now, we need to understand that the tongue by itself, without connection with the heart, can do nothing, can say nothing. So everything we're saying about the little member, the little tongue, understand, is in connection with the heart. The heart is the center of our living. And if the heart is unconverted, the tongue will be untamed. If the heart is carnal, the tongue will be critical. If the tongue, if the heart is dirty, 
the tongue will be obscene. If the heart is polluted, the tongue too will speak out polluted, perverse things. If the tongue, if the heart is cleansed, then the language, the tongue will be clean. If the heart is saved, the soul is saved, the inner man and experience that transformation of heart, the tongue will also speak clean. Conversion in the heart will bring cleanness of language and tongue. If the heart is sanctified, purified, holy, the tongue also and the language you speak will be sanctified words, they'll be clean words, they'll be pure words. If the heart is filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit, the tongue too will talk spiritual. So the question is not just about the tongue. If the tongue in connection with the heart, and I must ask you the question, have you been saved, born again, since you started coming to the church or hearing the word of God? I need to ask you, have you been sanctified? Have you been cleansed? Have you been made holy in your heart? The, since you started coming to the church, then your language will be different, your action will be different, and the use of your hand, little hand, the use of your feet, little feet, the use of your tongue, little member, will be profitable and purifying and defined to the people. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You are just coming and coming and coming. You have not been saved, you have not been sanctified, you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost. The condition of your heart will tell, will impact the conversation of your mouth. So let's understand, we're talking about the little things, the little tongue, and the little member. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it boasts great things. Then it says, Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. Tonight we're talking about the little member that determines great matters for time and eternity. The little member, the little tongue, the little part of that in your body that actually is so connected with your heart and your tongue cannot escape what your heart is thinking, what your heart is feeling, what your heart is planning. And it is that connection with the heart that shows the condition of your heart. I cannot see your heart, but I can hear what comes out from your tongue. I cannot touch your heart, but I can be touched by what comes out of your tongue. And it is that connection, the literal member that speaks out, that reveals the condition of your heart, whether you are converted or not, whether you are saved or not, whether you are sanctified, whether you are at peace or not in your heart. If you are not at peace in your heart, your tongue will not project any peaceful relationship or conversation. It's the tongue that reveals whether you are shallow or you are deep, whether you are full and filled with the Holy Ghost or you are empty completely. And the tongue, that is that the reason why we're looking at this. There are three things we're looking at tonight as we consider the message. Number one is the little fire that devours great men. The little fire is talking about the tongue and it refers to that tongue as fire the little fire that devours great men. Now look at number two. Number two, yeah, the little foxes. I told you, we're concentrating on the word little. It appears little, a little word, a little sentence, a little conversation, a little action, 
It's more little behavior, the little forces that destroy great ministries. Number three, the little faith that doubts our great maker. The little faith that doubts our great maker. Uh, you'll understand the foxes connected with the little tongue. You understand the little faith connected with the little tongue. Everything is still about the tongue, but it looks at the tongue in different perspective so that we'll take care what happens to us in time on earth and in eternity by the activities and the actions of the tongue we're looking at number one here number one is the little fire that devours great men we're looking at james chapter uh, three and we're reading from verse five in james chapter three verse five it says even so uh, the, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things uh, and it says behold how great a matter the little fire came look at verse six in verse six it says it says and the tongue is a fire the tongue is a fire you know why because the heart is full of the fury when the heart is furious the tongue will be fire when the tongue is angry the tongue will be like fire and when the heart is filled with hatred understand it's not the fault of the tongue in the condition of the heart and if the heart is full of hatred you'll find the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity if the iniquity in the heart had not been forgiven had not been uprooted then the mouth, the leaves, the tongue will be full of iniquity. But when the iniquity is uprooted from the heart, when the heart does not have that deep, depraved nature of iniquity anymore, then the tongue will be free. But now the common man, the depraved man, the natural man, the unsaved man and the tongue is a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members among our members he's talking about the members the eyes members of the body ears members of the body the mouth member of the body and the hands members of the body and the feet members of the body and all these members are coordinated and directed by the heart make the tree good and its fruit will be good make the heart saved converted consecrated purified and the tongue and the members will be all right but it says this tongue it defileth the whole body and is and set it on fire the cause of nature is the tongue that sets on fire the cause of nature, the life that we should live naturally, the tongue coming from the heart that defileth the whole nature, and it is set on fire on the fire of hell. Now look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea it says is tamed and has been tamed of mankind and that's what the lord uh, told adam and eve they'll subdue the earth and bring everything on earth everything in the sea everything in the sky under control and man has done that they've tamed elephants they've tamed lions they put them in the zoo they actually control them they control those things outside of us man can easily control things outside himself but it tells us in verse 8 
it says, but the tongue can no man tame. Why? Oh, because the heart remains the natural heart, the sinful heart, the unconverted heart, the unregenerated heart. And once the heart remains like that, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And because the heart cannot be converted by man, there's no salvation in all the efforts of man. That's why since he cannot convert his heart, he cannot cleanse his heart, he cannot regenerate his heart, he cannot transform his heart, that's why he cannot tame, he cannot change, he cannot turn the tongue. That's why it says, but the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Uh, we're coming to, you know, some men now. The way they spoke, the little tongue brought them into destruction. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 5. We're reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 5. Reading from verse 24, it says, Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble, and the, and the flame consumes, it consumes the chaff. So their spot, their root, shall be as rottenness. When he said their root, he's not talking of the root of the righteous or the root of the transformed, or the root of the children of God, the root of the common man, the root of the carnal man, the root of the lifestyle, the conversation of the common person who had not been born again. His root will be like rottenness, and it says they have cast away the law of the Lord out. They have cast away that law the law of the Lord of hosts, and it says they have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Who are those people? Unrighteous people, unconverted people, unsaved people. That's why, because their hearts are not saved, their hearts are not transformed, their hearts are not changed. That's the reason why their tongue will be like fire and the fire devours them it tells us in exodus chapter 5 look at verse 2 here is a pharaoh and here is the little tongue of pharaoh coming out and saying what a man shouldn't say to his maker about his maker and pharaoh said who is the lord that i should obey be his voice to let Israel go. I know not the Lord. Then he said, Neither will I let Israel go. Uh, can you make some connection there? I know not the Lord because I know not the Lord. I will not let the children of Israel go.